if you're trying to break into machine learning and you're doing cookie cutter projects and basic online tutorials, it's just not gonna work. It's like trying to win a Formula One race in a go-kart. Sure, you'll move, but you definitely won't win the race. So in this video, I want to break down the types of projects and frameworks that will actually land you a job. They're not easy though, but that's exactly why they'll get you hired. Let's get into it. Think about it. A machine learning research paper is a combination of months worth of work from leading practitioners in the field, summarized in just a few or tens of pages. The amount of knowledge in these research papers is phenomenal, and you can access it in just a few hours. So if you break down, dissect, and just understand everything in a research paper, imagine how much you will learn. If we go back to the Formula One analogy I used earlier, it's like building a Formula One car using just the blueprints. Sure, you may not have the exact knowledge that the original automotive engineers used to build the car, but by building it from the blueprints, you understand how every nut and bolt works and just how the whole machine operates. And when you finally do build that Formula One car from the blueprints, you understand the concept of racing a lot more. Now, that kind of theory or analogy can also be used for machine learning. When you break down an algorithm to its fundamental parts in a paper where there's loads of like deep maths and then reconstruct it, like you're gonna learn so much more than simply people who just implement packages all the time when they wanna solve a problem. Re-implementing a research paper will simply teach you so many skills. Number one, you'll understand all the complex maths underpinning some of the most cutting edge models. Number two, You'll learn how to actually implement sophisticated models from scratch using basic libraries and native Python. Number three, you'll understand how to think more creatively and apply your current knowledge to new areas, which is something that you kind of really need if you want to be a really good machine learning engineer. And the best part is 99% of candidates are not doing this, so you will immediately stand out from the crowd. Now, how you go about reading and implementing a research paper could be a whole video in itself. But let me break down the key steps for you. The first step is read the paper, then read it again and again and again. Read it enough times until you fully understand what's going on. Depending on your current skill level, this may take you a while, but that's totally okay. The second step is that even after you've read the paper multiple times and you're still uncertain on certain topics, go and study them. This is not procrastination because you're actively filling knowledge gaps that you have. The third step is sketch the high level architecture of the paper or the problem. So why the inputs, why is the ML model, why is the outputs, just like again the high level overview of what's going on in the paper. The fourth step is implement the simplest part of the paper and get it working. The fifth step is to expand on the simple part you just built and build a really naive or MVP prototype. And finally, the last step is optimize and try to replicate the results the authors had in the paper. Some papers I recommend that you implement are attention is all you need, an image is worth 16 by 16 words, transformers for image recognition at scale, language models are few short learners, and LoRa low rank adaption of large language models. Now, these are mainly in the deep learning and like AI field, but you can find papers on so many websites on a specialism or topic area that really interests you. For example, some useful websites to find papers are Trending Papers on Hugging Face, ML Papers of the Week, and Good Old Archive. If you're going through a research paper and you're finding that you really lack some gaps in your knowledge, then I recommend you take a course from 365 Data Science who are kindly sponsoring this video. 365 Data Science is a leading online education platform with the number one most reviewed AI and data science course on Trustpilot. However, it gets even better. From the 6th to the 21st of November, all of their AI and data science courses are completely free. So you get to learn AI, ML and data science from leading practitioners in the field at absolutely no cost and upskill your career. I personally recommend their machine learning track, which will teach you all the maths, statistics, and machine learning algorithms for a career in this field. I'm confident that this course will fill many of the knowledge gaps you may have when reading research papers. The track contains multiple short courses that teach you the essential information through short videos, hands-on problems, 
and exams. So you will learn through actual practice. Not to mention at the end of the course, you'll get a certificate that you can add to your resume. Learners from 365 Data Science now work at leading companies like Meta, Microsoft, HSBC, PwC, and many, many more. So you'll be in great hands. I will leave all of this linked in the description below for you to check out. What projects should I build? This is the second most question I get asked. The first being how I got so handsome. The thing is, most people don't understand that this question is flawed right from the beginning. A great project is personal to you. So any project that I suggest that you do will immediately be a bad project for your scenario. Let me give you an example of a great project. I mentioned this in one of my previous videos, but I'm going to repeat it here to really hammer home the point of the types of projects you should be building. At my previous company, we were hiring a junior data scientist who would specialize in optimization and operations research problems. Now, the person we ended up hiring stood out for one key reason. They had a highly relevant project to the job and it was a personal project where they told an interesting story about why they built the project and again, why it was very personal to them. So this person, they were very interested in how to better allocate players in NFL fantasy football. So it's very similar to Premier League fantasy football here in the UK. And every week you would have, you know, a certain budget and you have to select a team. And people like this because you win money or you compete in tournaments. So this person, what they did is that they created an optimization algorithm to better allocate the players each week. But it wasn't so much that they just built an algorithm. They also read around the subject a lot. So they looked at research papers, right? See the link and saw how, you know, optimization works for these types of problems. They also looked at how other people who are like, you know, competing to win money in these competitions, how they approach the problem. Most of these were professors at top universities. So they read around, they improved the optimization algorithm. And again, this is an example of a very personal problem or personal thing they were interested in that they were trying to solve using optimization. So again, the story is really nice and clear. They have, you know, the, the actual thing they built is directly relevant for the job. So there's no wonder why they got hired and that passion kind of showed through in the interview. But the question you may have is, how do you come up with such projects for yourself? Well, let me give you a framework that you can follow. Number one, list at least five things that you're interested in outside of work and data science and machine learning. The second point, after you've listed those five things, think of five questions each for th those, those topics you enjoy and just list things you'd like the answers to or ideas you'd like to explore. At this point, you have 25 kind of ideas, processes, just 25 kind of concepts that interest you. Number three, for those 25 ideas, think of ways that you can use machine learning to solve them or answer them. Now, they don't have to be particularly, you know, grounded. Like obviously don't try to create a project that where you create robot dogs that walk up walls, but be creative. Think of just random things that machine learning could solve, even if it seems kind of ridiculous or impossible at that point in time. And finally, number four, out of those 25 kind of ideas that you can use machine learning, pick an idea which seems kind of reasonable, but a little bit out of your reach so that when you actually do try to implement it, it will push you and encourage you to learn new skills. That is a sweet spot. And I promise you, if you follow this process, you will find a project that is personal to you and is challenging enough and you will like. And one more key thing on this, the project you should select should take you about one to two months to build. It should be big enough, but not massive, but you want to make this like a cornerstone of your portfolio. However, the idea on its own won't necessarily be sufficient. For that, you need to build some complexity and scale to your project. Now, this can be shown and expressed in many different ways. The first one is that you deploy your whole project end to end using things like unit testing, production code, cloud systems, and containerization through things like Docker and Kubernetes. Basically a whole end to end machine learning lifecycle project. Number two, 
you can build a really complex and state-of-the-art machine learning algorithm. This would be useful if you read lots of research papers and you can build something that is quite impressive or very cutting edge. Number three, you can make it more kind of product or user facing, i.e. make it that it's live on the internet and users can interact with it somehow and play around with it. So a lot more of a kind of SaaS approach, you could say. Number four, you can solve the problem in different ways. What that will look like is basically just applying a range of models to that problem. There are many, many more ways of building sufficient complexity and scale to your project. So don't get too overwhelmed. The main thing is just start this process and just slowly build on it over time. And I promise you, if you work on this an hour per day for two months, you'll have something that's really, really special and something you'll be really excited to talk about during interviews and something that will actually land you interviews. If for some reason you don't fancy re-implementing a research paper or spending time building and coming up with your own project idea, let me give you some further ideas of projects you can build. The first one is simply ask ChatGPT for a project and see what it gives you. The second one is enter a Kaggle competition but you kind of have to place well for it to be impressive. The third one is use an AI or foundational model to solve a personal problem to you. The fourth one is code machine learning algorithms completely from scratch using things like NumPy. Even better if you can do it using native Python. Now, if you require even more handholding, these are some more specific projects that you can build. The first one is a reinforcement learning algorithm for Pac-Man or any other games. Second one is a computer vision model for classifying images of pretty much anything. The third one is sentiment analysis on a social media platform about a particular topic. Fourth one is a recommendation system for any application you use. And finally, you can fine tune an LLM for a particular case. Again, these are still kind of quite high level because like I said throughout this whole video, a good project is either you re-implement a research paper or you build something that is personal to you. So stop procrastinating and do those two projects. And after you've built those two projects, you're now ready to start applying for jobs. But to actually land interviews, you need a rock solid resume. So what makes the difference between a resume that gets ignored and one that actually gets you hired? Well, see my previous video here where I break down that exact question. I'll see you there.